Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Frank Reynolds at ABC Space Headquarters in New York. It is July 16th, 1969, and we are all about to witness the fulfillment of that promise that President Kennedy made at Rice University Stadium in Texas on September 12, 1962. The moon that still has not set in some parts of our world has only a few more days of uh, what you might call untrammeled history. These three men are about to embark on certainly one of history's most glorious adventures. Commander Neil Armstrong, Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin, and Command Module Pilot Mike Collins. Armstrong and Collins have already entered their command module, and Buzz Aldrin will be entering to join them in a few moments to begin this epic journey. And we shall all see it. ABC Science Editor Jules Bergman is at the Cape. There has been uh, a minor difficulty uh, developed there at the Cape, and let's get a report from Jules now on just what is being done. Good morning, Jules. Good morning, Frank. We're at T-minus uh, two hours and 28 minutes into the scheduled launch of Apollo 11 at 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and the countdown has been going spectacularly until about 10 minutes ago, just before Neil Armstrong, Mike Collins, and Buzz Aldrin started to get in into the cabin of Apollo 11. And then a slight leak developed in a valve system that replenishes the liquid hydrogen for the third stage of the Saturn V, the S-4B stage. The valve in question is not on the spacecraft itself, but on GSE, or ground support equipment. It's the same valve, the very same valve, by the way, that leaked back on Apollo 10. Everything else here, Frank, is holding up very well. There's a forecast of clouds at 15,000 feet. As we look back to pad 39, right directly behind our ABC News space headquarters here at the Cape, you can see the clouds over the ocean, they haven't yet truly developed over the land area, and if it stays this way, everyone in the country and millions of people gathered around central Florida will get a spectacular eyewitness view of Apollo 11 and the Saturn V lifting off. Uh, as it is now, there's a light layer of cirrus clouds that are about 15 to 20,000 feet over the Cape. Uh, they could cause some interference with visual viewing, but not with the launch itself. The launch limits have gone down really much, if you will, on this uh, fifth launch, fourth launch, we should say, of the Saturn V, fourth manned launch, fifth unmanned. Uh, as of now, the weather is good, the countdown going well, except for this liquid hydrogen leak, which has to be fixed, and there's no reason to think we won't lift off at 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, as scheduled. That's the story, Frank. The astronauts of Apollo 11 uh, awoke early today and began their ritual-like preparations for this blast off to the moon. Uh, one of their doctors, as I told you earlier, said they appear rested, fit as a fiddle, and ready to go. They actually had about eight hours of sound sleep, which is probably more than a good many other people who were preparing for this launch uh, today. They had a, a big breakfast of scrambled eggs, steak, toast, coffee, and orange juice. And for a film report on their final meal on Earth before blasting off, here's Jules Bergman at the Cape. Crew, <clears throat> astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins were awakened at 4.15 a.m. this morning, just about three hours ago, after having gone to bed about 9.20 last night, and immediately after a quick medical, uh, had a, the traditional astronaut's breakfast of steak and eggs. There's Buzz Aldrin, the lunar module pilot. We saw Mike Collins a moment ago. Spacecraft Commander Neil Armstrong, who'll be 39 on August 5th, just a few days from now, led by security guards, waving a farewell. As they get into the transfer van uh, for the three and a half mile ride uh, to pad 39A, Neil Armstrong leading the way, then Mike Collins in, and finally Buzz Aldrin. We're back at ABC Space Headquarters in New York awaiting the still scheduled launch at 9.32 Eastern Daylight Time this morning of Apollo 11. The commander of the mission is 38 year old Neil Armstrong, the only civilian among the three man crew, and of course the man scheduled to take the first actual step on the moon. The pilot of the lunar landing module is Edwin Aldrin, Jr., 39 years old and an Air Force Colonel. 38-year-old Michael Collins, a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force, is the pilot of the command module. It will be his job to circle the moon while Armstrong and Aldrin are down on its surface. Jules, did you have any difficulty getting out to the Cape this morning? Frank, we had no difficulty, but we, we practically didn't get to sleep at all last <laughs> night just to be sure we didn't have, or wouldn't have any difficulty. The shot we're looking at from the helicopter now is over Highway A1A, the main north-south road along the Atlantic, and we're looking at the beach just below the south gate, the old gate one of the Cape where we came in this morning. 
You know, the drama may be here at Pad 39 and on the moon this Sunday, that unforgettable drama, but it's somehow, for me, also on the roads around this spit of land which Spanish explorers 352 years ago landed on and called Canaveral, for, for the fields of sugar cane. That's what Canaveral means in Spanish, cane fields. The fields of sugar cane they found growing here. We passed 10,000 odd cars that we've guesstimated, parked around the gate one area at 4 a.m. when we got here, cars from every state, with little kids staring wide-eyed at the Saturn V, glowing in the huge xenon spotlights 15 miles away. And we saw teenagers with telescopes. It was the very same road we came over eight long years ago, 21 manned space flights ago, when we came out at it just about the same hour to cover Alan Shepard's 15-minute suborbital hop, America's first manned space flight. Americans cared then, I think, and they care now. And it was a very moving scene for me because, well, we were tired. They were tired. They'd been up all night. All those th thousands of people who we see now in daylight in those cars parked along the road that our live helicopter is uh, showing us. Indeed, the helicopter pilot this morning, Bob Lockrow is his name, was the same man who used to fly us here with the very first film switches we did on flights and the very first live things. There's good luck. Good luck, Apollo 11, engraved in the sand. All going very smoothly here with the count. Among the distinguished visitors here this morning, uh, along with Vice President Spiro Agnew, is the former president, Lyndon Johnson. There's our live picture from the VIP stands on the other side of the VAB and, and Launch Control Center. Behind uh, the former president is former NASA Administrator James Webb, sitting in the picture. Uh, and many other dignitaries gathered there. Some 8,000 dignitaries and all invited by the space agency as guests uh, to be at this launch. And there's Mrs. Johnson being greeted with the former president. 42 minutes and 44 seconds away from liftoff now of Apollo 11, which is about the size of a United States Navy destroyer, as we pointed out to you uh, a bit earlier. It stands higher than the Statue of Liberty, and it is the most sophisticated space vehicle in the world today. It is made up of five separate parts. Jules Bergman has the story on it. Apollo 11 contains the lunar module, or LEM, which will weigh more than 32,000 pounds at launch time. The command module serves as a flight operations center and living quarters for the astronauts. After the third stage rocket sends Apollo 11 toward the moon, the onboard service module engine will be used to put the astronauts into lunar orbit and later to return them home to Earth. The total payload, nearly 100,000 pounds, rests on a Saturn V rocket. The first stage generates 7.5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. The second stage will carry the Apollo spacecraft and astronauts to an altitude of 100 miles. And then the third stage breaks Apollo 11 out of Earth orbit and propels the astronauts toward the moon. And this is what Eagle, the lunar module uh, on Apollo 11, will look like after, uh, after its legs or uh, its, its gear is put down after translunar flight has begun and as it heads toward the moon. In addition to this black and white covering, of course, it's covered by gold and black uh, thermal foil, if you will, mylar foil and black foil to protect it from heating as it heads around into lunar orbit and then down, down toward its descent on the moon. But essentially, that's what the vehicle looks like, a very ungainly machine. The astronauts still call it a thin, light-walled flying machine, a thin, light-walled structure. But it has proven to be one heck of a good flying machine on two flights now, Apollo 9 and Apollo 10. Launch Control is telling us now that uh, things are proceeding very smoothly with the fueling and with topping off the liquid oxygen in the S1C, the Saturn uh, main stage, all going very smoothly at uh, T minus 40 minutes. and. Uh, we're lifting off at 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time as of now. Everything proceeding very smoothly toward that pre-calculated liftoff time.